You're listening to the iFanboy Pick of the Week podcast, episode number 200, sponsored by Iverse Media, Squarespace, and iFanboy members like you. And welcome to the iFanboy Pick of the Week podcast, episode number 200, coming at you live from Jim Hanley's Universe in Manhattan in New York City. I just want a button that does that all the time. That just, anyway. So, uh, I'm Ron Richards, and I'm joined, as always, by Connor Kilpatrick. Hello. And Josh Flanagan. Howdy. And for those who might not be in the know, we are from iFanboy.com, which is a website which is all about comic books. And uh, there we read a lot of comics. And every week we read a bunch of books that came out. And one of us has the pleasure of picking uh, the pick of the week and writes a review of it over on iFanboy.com. And then normally we gather in our respective homes and talk over Skype about the books that came out. But this week, this is the 200th episode, we are here in Jim Hanley's universe uh, doing it in front of all you kind folks. So thank you for coming. Um, before we get started, uh, we're going to talk about what happened in the comics. So if you haven't read your comic books yet, if you're listening, press pause. If you're here, you might want to yeah, cover your ears or something. <laughs> or if you're just shopping. Yeah. Sorry. You can Sorry. run into the back. It's so a big store. Just spoiler just warning. Back that way. But uh, so just be careful. We might spoil something for you. Uh, this week, Josh had the pick, and I will hand it off to him. Yes. What an interesting week of comic books, because uh, normally we are deluged by, by Dark Rain and Blackest Night and all this, and this week was just all everything else. This was an out. awesome week. It was a really neat week, yeah. uh, if you like that kind of thing. But if you don't, you're probably not as happy. Um, <laughs> turns out I do. Um, <clears throat> So my pick of the week was uh, Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth number one from Vertigo. It is the third of their series of $1 first issues. And I was really, really looking forward to this for a long time for a few reasons. One, there, there isn't, not, not one of us wasn't thoroughly uh, touched by Essex County, the, yep. the trilogy that he did. And, and over time, you just see more and more people pick it up. And it, it's a really significant work, and Ron. Irregardless of this book, if you haven't read Essex County yet, they just released a volume of all three stories in one volume in trade and hardcover. If they have it here, if you're thinking about getting it, get it. It's probably one of the best books collections. It's going to win an Eisner next year. So that's we little, always say that. We always happens. do. Yeah. 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 Maybe I just jinxed it. We've, We've never gotten place. one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, no uh, one that we ever suggest would win ever wins. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this book coming out, I was, I was really looking forward to it. But it's interesting because it's a sci-fi book. Now, now Lemire had done a very short uh, graphic novel called The Nobody for, for Vertigo. And it was, it was a little out of his comfort zone. But still, you could see the, the similarity to the work that he'd done before. But this is like a full-on boy with deer antlers, science fiction, post-apocalyptic story that seems to be pretty far to the stuff he'd done before. And it's an ongoing, which he'd never done before. So I was really looking forward to it. Plus. Um, here's your inside baseball. We talked to some people from DC um, in San Diego, and they were like, they were like, you don't understand how good the book is. is. And we we're like, okay, whatever, you know. But like, no, yeah. by issue three, it's God on paper, and they were very excited. So I had very high expectations for it. However, um, I know that when I read a Jeff Lemire book, it's not the kind of book that you're going to read and go, uh, like, you're not going to turn the page and like, oh my God. It doesn't work like that. It's very subtle, and it's 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 very emotional uh, in, a, in a very sort of quiet way. They're really quiet books. So when I got it and I read everything else and I started thinking about the stuff that was making me, uh, you know, think about it afterwards, and I went back and I read it again. This was easily the best thing that I read this week. Um, and also, just it's a really good book for people to try out at one dollar. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. First off, it's a dollar. So like Vertigo's been doing this with their number one issues. Like you, everybody has a dollar. Like, it's, uh, my snap will cost more than a dollar. Like, there's no excuse not to p pick this up to just to give it a shot. And the great thing about what Lemire does is that, like, yes, Josh, it's like the, the, the elevator pitch for the story is like Bambi meets Mad Max, you know, because so, the kid's got antlers and it's all post apocalyptic. But what's great is that, you know, Lemire has a uh, subtle, like, emotional aspect to his stories. Like, they're, it's they're, in his yeah, lines. Yeah. It's like, just as, for whatever reason, like, you look at his artwork, it's not, he's not Jim Lee, right. but, like, there's just this. Consuming emotion that's coming through his drawings for whatever reason, and it's from all I can tell and everything I've heard, like he draws at the speed of light. Yeah. Like he can put out a book a month easy. It's it's no problem for him. Um, you know, and the other thing I like about this book is that I don't really know anything about it. Right. Like at this point in this issue, I don't know very much. We know that there is a, uh, a I guess like a reservation or a preserve, and there so, there was an accident. Something happened. Something happened, and no other kids are being born except for a few, and the ones that are are special. They're hybrids, which is, uh, assume this kid Gus is one of them, and for some reason he has uh, deer features. 
yeah. uh, for some reason. So it's just him and his dad living in the woods, and he tells him the rest. The father tells him the rest of the world's evil. You got the Bible and each other, and we're good. And then the dad dies, and then some hunters come, and and we're. And then another guy shows up. That's basically what happened. That's, yeah, I mean, that's like, the whole thing. And, and the thing is that, like, <laughs> like Essex County and the Nobody were kind of complete graphic novels. This is an ongoing, on a monthly basis. So, like, this is just a taste of what I'm used to with Jeff Lemire. Mm -hmm. Like, there, I'm used to a complete story. And there, there was. It's yeah. true. But there was a scene of, of uh, an uncomfortable, quiet scene at a dinner table. Yes. And that <laughs> is what Jeff Lemire does better than anybody. See, I guess you haven't read Essex County. He did. <laughs> thought it was funny. I'm, I'm going to take a slight... Uh, opposite of viewpoint. Oh, I like. I thought it was a solid four-star book. I gave it mm -hmm. four on five. A fanboy, but I think with color, his art is really diminished. Really, I find really? it much more powerful when it's starkly black and white. Yeah, this is his first colored uh, work, and Jose Villaruba, who's one of the best colorists around. And it's nothing against him, but I feel like his it. art needs to be black and white. I feel like his art and the other two books are way really powerful. Like those, those, yeah. no, the Nobody and Essex County, you know, were beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's good, but I just feel like it's sort of almost flattens the art. Which is ironic because you're adding color. It's kind color of flat texture anyway, I would say. No, but yeah. I feel like there's when it's black and white, the black is really starkly black. Whereas here, it's colored, so it's not as yeah. It's not as starkly black. Now, the other thing is, we, I'm used to we're used to reading him in graphic novel form, mm -hmm. where you really immerse yourself in the story. Right. It was so slight. It was only yeah, one it, issue. Yeah, it, got, it, really, went, it went really fast. It went really, it went really, yeah, really which I'm, which yeah. I don't, I don't mean slight from a content standpoint. From a you didn't really get to invest yourself in the characters in the story. So right. when it was over. I wanted more, but I also didn't feel connected to it. Right. Because there that, wasn't a lot of it. And that's the challenge with the ongoing versus the graphic novel, because we only get 22 pages of the story. And, and like we said, we spoke to the folks at DC, and they said, by issue three, it just was going to blow your mind. You know, so you've, got to, you've almost got to commit to those three issues to get to that point. Um, whereas in a graphic novel, you're getting that all in one shot. Don't chunk. get me wrong. I thought it was really yeah. good. It just, for yeah. me, when I finished it, I was like, right. you know. It's weird to sit in the middle. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, um, but no, I, I like the color. This is the first colored work we've seen from Lemire, and I, I was a little uh, nervous about it. But when I saw the pages on, online, it, when the I, preview I, pages went up, I was happy. If I you mean, were going to color it, I think this is the way to color it. Yeah. It wasn't overly done. It was fairly flat, and it was sort of subdued and subtle. So it sort of fit yeah. along with that style. Plus, also Lemire has he's cleaned up his style a lot for this. I, mean, I like, you, I like his rougher art better. Yeah. You'll see, it'll see it. It's going to look cleaner as he goes on yeah. from the other thing that I've heard. I th one of the other things I thought was really neat is in the beginning of it, um, it's all very um, stayed. It's very calm. And as the action starts to pick up and the danger comes up, like the angles get canted a little more and you start to see the, the artwork take a slightly different um, tone to it. Um, yep. It's just a little more exciting and a little more scary and there's a lot more upshots and things like that. And, and it's just a visual way of, of cueing us that you know, shit's getting hairier now. Yeah. Um, well, and Lemire's great. I mean, the thing about Lemire is his pacing, because he's writing and drawing it, so he's controlling the pace on both levels, mm -hmm. and he's taking you through the story at the speed he thinks that you should go, mm -hmm. um, which is a subtle kind of ability that not, you know, when it's done really well, you don't notice it, but when it's done poorly, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. And, mm -hmm. and given the single issue format, I thought the pacing was great. Um, and I'm really interested because, like, from a theme standpoint, a lot of Lemire's kind of like his his uh, his wheelhouse is the story set in small towns. So, like, Essex County is in a small town in Canada. You know, the whole idea of small town living. The nobody was in a small fishing town with yeah. Big Mouth or whatever it is. Um, which for some reason I thought was in Wisconsin. I don't know why. Maybe it was. I don't know where it was. But um, but the idea of this is that you know you've got this this freakish deer boy. Who's Gus. been Gus? Who's been living in seclusion in a small town, and now his father dies, and he's living got a, in, a, in a shack. Yeah, yeah. Not even there's, a town. No, there's no town. There's no town. Yeah. Other people. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's but a now shack and surrounding woods. He's gonna he's gonna go into society. He's gonna go into you know he's gonna travel, and it's gonna become like a road book where he's gonna move out of that small town into a bigger world. And I think I'm, the thing is, yeah. I'm excited to see what that world looks like. Right. Because he's obviously going to have to go out of the things that he's done before, and I, I you know. And it's an interesting metaphor for the journey Jeff Lemire is taking as a creator. Because now he's going from Look indie at you books. With I know. Metaphor. How about that? Look at the analysis. You know, and now he's working I'm for. Done. <laughs> and now he's working for DC Comics and and doing Vertigo books. And you know, and I I interviewed Jeff in San Diego, and I asked him at the end of the interview, you know, you're doing all these indie books. Do you have any desire to do a superhero book? And he kind of grinned and said, Well, maybe I already am. So something might be in the works on the superhero world. It's going to be a Green Lantern, which is really <laughs> it's a stretch. We don't Do you that. have trouble picking a pick of the week this week? Not really. Because I still haven't picked one. Well, it was an odd week. There were a lot of fours. There were a lot of a lot of things that were pretty good, but not blow you away. Yep. Uh, you know, there wasn't like the issue that it made took you... three tries to finish my books this week. Wow. Like I said, don't read them all. Yeah. You know, you sent me an email saying what a crappy week, and I was like, no, this is a great week. And by this crappy, is... I meant nothing really stood out big time. But there was a yeah. lot of like good. Reads. Yeah. But nothing will really blew you away. Well, I thought it was interesting that with all that, everybody knows the news about Marvel and Disney and stuff like that, and that there was no like front, 
<laughs> there was no um, that Disney bought Marvel. Seven times. There was no. It doesn't um, get old though. I'm gonna keep it never gets old. It's gonna keep coming back. It's gonna get called back. There was no frontline <laughs> Marvel book that came out this week. Like if somebody heard in the news on Monday that Disney bought Marvel and went to the comic store and show me the latest Marvel comics book, it was like Strange Tales. Well, you know, like they're like theoretically, the books from last week would still be there. True. Yeah, I know. I mean, but I just thought it was, it was the worst shop on yeah. earth. <laughs> uh, uh, we got. Uh, they burn them. Yeah. For warmth. But, um, Spider Man. <laughs> but I thought it was a really diverse, it was a diverse week, and there was, I thought there was some really good stuff. Um, uh, Irredeemable number six came out from Boom Studios, which is uh, Mark Wade and Peter Krauss. Um, you know, continuing the story, last, uh, last issue, issue five, was the 99 cent issue, so hopefully people mm -hmm. jumped on with that. Um, I just, with every issue, this gets better and better in my eyes. I think the art gets better and better. Yeah. You yep. can see a noticeable improvement in the art, which I've always liked in the beginning, but. Uh, this is becoming one of my favorite series. Yeah. And I really can't decide why. I think it's because it's beautifully twisted, and that's not what you expect from Mark Wade. Yeah, and, and what's great is that, I mean, for those who aren't reading the book, it's about what if a Superman-type character goes mad and turns evil and starts killing all his, you know, his co-heroes. Everyone. And killing everyone. Um, and each issue, I mean, it's being told in issue format, and it's being told in such a way that you get this little compact story about his descent into madness while keeping the bigger story moving. And, and this was the, one of the first ones I thought that really touched on some of the bigger things yeah. that made him go wonky. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought that was neat. I assume that the very scene in the very beginning was him. You're the kid, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's like he's a little a orphan he's remembering kid. His time Did you see on the, door, the front of the door is his logo? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. You, you gotta read, read these, these, right? Yeah, you gotta look at the books. Listen, I had a lot of books to read. I went fast. <laughs> I don't get all the details. He was remembering his, when, when he first found his powers and freaked his mom out. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he killed her with a bike. Maybe he did. I don't Maybe know. Maybe she deserved it. I, th I think he did. <laughs> wow. <My> anyway, I know <laughs> Connor's mother's here, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, you didn't deserve it. She yeah. Might have. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just think the juggling between the the present and the past, and you know, like th those are, you know, telling that kind of story is not easy. And Mark Wade is probably one of the best writers out there. I think it's from the he '90s. You know, he was a big big writer. He sort of fell off in the last five years. Came back in '52. But this is sort of a reminder that he's really, 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 really good. No, Absolutely. yeah, he knows what he's doing with the superhero yeah. books. Yeah, Espe especially with these, you know, morally. And it's so you know, far off his comfort zone. You know, he's like old school guy. He likes like he could, when stuff. he did like the the bold, brave and the bold. It yep. was all like deep continuity. Take out every character from the toy box yep. that I know everything about. And this is just this is more empireish. Just this, yeah, this is yeah. dark and twisted. All new. I did like when the um, when his former super team, the other heroes, they're trying with each issue. Uh, the super, the other heroes are trying to get away because they want to the hide. So they, yeah, so they don't die. So this this issue, they escape to his secret lair, which is in the middle of a volcano. And like in the middle, floating in, in the like lava. Like floating in the lava, you can only teleport into it. But I like there's a shot, Peter Krauss drew a shot of the building of the hideout in the volcano. And there's like a statue of <laughs> yeah. him and his logo. Like it's just, I mean, the little touches like that make this like this realized universe that, you know, that I'm discovering with each issue. Those are the big kind of comic book ideas that Mark Wade does really well. I remember, because yeah. I hadn't read him for a while. Like outside of 52, I think that Brave and the Bold thing was the first thing that I read from him in a while. And like I remember just being struck over and over by the imagination. Yep. And like that's one of the things that he does really well. And this is a book that he's like at first I wasn't sold on it. Like I was like, I think I like it, but I want to see what happens. Right. And now I'm I'm totally sold on it. Yeah. It's a really good, enjoyable book. Yeah, so you haven't caught up. The first trade is like nine ninety nine, collects issues one through four. You probably still get issue five. You can get this issue. It's a great, you know, book from Boom Studios, independent publisher. They kinda need help maybe now, because after the Disney deal. <laughs> the what deal? <laughs> right, exactly. So Anyway, so your deal, we'll it's check that back. out. It's coming back the whole segment. It'll be, it's going to be really funny every at book, some point. Every book. Um, <laughs> By this book, it'll be real funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go with that. Uh, the, one of the books that I considered, I thought about, was Chew Number 4. You don't Chew need to validate yourself to me. Just to, why? Because I'm just curious. I just want you to love me. I do. Okay. In a special way. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, shoe number three was pick of the week last time. Yeah, it was. Um, and it's funny because... This was really good, too. It was really good, but this was part four of five, mm -hmm. and it was a radical departure from where we were in three. Like, it mm -hmm. went in a completely different place, and I was like, is this a new arc? Is it not? Right. Um, but it was still a hell of a lot of fun. There was there was a page, there was a specific page in it. It was great. Um, were they? We're all just looking at it. They yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, you'll have to. They're, they're, I'm trying to remember what it was that exactly happened. It was. It was the. Um, oh, urn. the ashes. Yep. They they turn an urn full of ashes into a fan, and it covers all the characters in the scene with dust. And, and I'd never seen a page done this way. Like yeah. I was like, that's a new Not thing in a comic book. Great. Which for me, they stayed great through the whole scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it was a really fun page. But I think what's so great about Chu and why Chu is like the surprise of the summer is that uh, Layman, the writer, and Rob Guillory, the artist, they're coming up with something new every issue that is completely unexpected. Last issue was the theme, <laughs> it was the it was the woman, the food critic. Mm -hmm. This issue was the idea of this. Um, 
Ar Antarctic uh, base that is like a uh, what's a planetarium or a star like a big telescope yeah. place? Observatory. I love observatory. That. Thank you. <laughs> but um, so there's an observatory, and the idea being that the government has funded them and they've given them thirty million dollars, and they show up and there's like a bar and strippers, <laughs> and they're like, and they the, they only need three million to run. Yeah, the they're place. like, we only need three million to run the place, and so and we start we start out of their minds. Yeah, they said we started buying everything our wildest dreams could imagine. And it's all the strippers in the bars, like, and then we bought the things that were jokes, and there's like an alpaca. <laughs> <laughs> just like, right? and it's like this idea of what is you know like all these little things in the government that are way overfunded. What yeah. would really happen? Mm -hmm. And you know like this this little universe that but they're building. Then it building. went planetary too. Yes, yeah. it did, and that's what I think at the end I was like, wow, that's that was well, a departure. Well, yeah, no, and not so, in a bad so, way. So the book the book went from like a pseudo realistic kind of cop kind of thing about chasing down you know illegal food substance, and by the end of this issue now we've got a science fiction angle to it, I which missed, I didn't see coming I at all. I missed the chicken angle because I really liked that in the beginning where the whole yeah. idea of the chickens being drugs, and we kind of gotten away from that a little bit. It does feel, it did feel to me like it was early to start making a departure, but yeah. it may be trying to, it was one of those things where I've heard some things about like, well, how far can this go? How long can they take this? And with this issue, you see that there are so many stories that can be told in this world. There's so many things that they can do, you know, with these guys. And that's the thing is that we were worried about this book is that how far can it last mm -hmm. because of this this great concept? You tell somebody the idea and it's like, oh, that's a great idea, but how can you stretch that out 60 issues? You do it as a case-based sort of thing. Imagination. Exactly. True. That's why I'm not a writer. No. Uh, there's nothing else that can be done with this. <laughs> They've solved comics. <laughs> so Chew was really good. Um, yes. The last issue of Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips Incognito came out this week. And can I ask you a question about it? Yeah, sure. What was the point of it? What was the point of it? Like I finished it and I was like, all right. I thought it was really good. I thought it was like this, this might have been the best, the best issue. One, best issue I, I think the whole series, I kind of feel like. Oh, I don't know what the point of the issue of the series was. Like, yeah, I don't. I there was not really a, an arc to the story. It's kind of like. Well, yeah, it was a story of Zach Overkill. No, I mean, but it was. It was. It was, I was. I was never attached to him. He was never really explored. Oh. Like, you made your mind up about this one no, early. No, I didn't. I liked this, the first three. You were like, okay. No, no, I did. I, I thought this Let's was. Let's go back to the videotape. This was. <laughs> is there a videotape? <laughs> I tape all. Okay. <laughs> you don't even want when to see When the light comes on your webcam, that means <laughs> yeah. I've hacked in, it's on. Oh. I see everything. Um, God, you're creeping me out a lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> With all these people, it's. Ugh. Um, this was my most. I'd say this is my favorite of these issues for yeah. a couple of reasons. It was one of the ones where all of a sudden, again, those big science fiction superhero ideas, he started to use them. He was doing a superhero book before. But it was like in the style of criminal. And in this one, he was like, you know what? Let's 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 have clones and and the creepy lady who was terminal, who was always 16, and then she turned like 90 or whatever she was. Her age caught up with her. Yeah, yep. and, and it was just some neat ideas and some things going on. Well, also, again, again, I mean, like Irredeemable, this is the creation of a universe that like we're so used to reading Marvel comics and DC comics for you know 70 years of con continuity and stories, and not direct continuity, but the idea of these you know these characters and these worlds. And like with Irredeemable, with Chew, with Incognito, these are examples of Writers doing something new, trying to introduce something new to the to the lexicon, mm -hmm. and I love the idea. Like this had a this had a flashback to um, a previous hero that um, is the main character is somewhat related to through cloning, and it's like I want to know more about that character. Like with every kind of reveal, I, think, I see the future stories. That was my biggest problem with that yeah. was that every time he he crammed so much in that we never really got to know anything. And like, he admitted that at the end, he said that this you know this is the last issue, and and I had a hard time. It's this is the reason why it took so long to come out is because it's a little fatter than usual. Yeah. And he said I had so much stuff to cram into it. I, you know I kind of underestimated how many pages I need, and it just that idea like. I wish that you know Ed Brubaker could tell these kind of stories all the time because it seems like there's a lot of you know good ideas to mine from it. Yes, that and and not to take anything away, but Sean Phillips is one of my favorite artists. This and, was really strong. And every issue that he did of this was really really strong, and yep. this one might have been the best of them. Yeah. Um, this is Sean Phillips at his best. So, I mean, great pages, great layouts in this. Uh, really good storytelling by Sean Phillips, and, and the Val Staples colors uh, are probably getting better, Yeah, I think. As but he's going. So after this, they're, they're doing another arc of Criminal, which I'm sure you guys will be happy about. Yay. Right. I am happy about that. Yeah. Quite happy about that. Yeah. Um, so, so Connor, did you, if you were going to pick a pick of the week, what would yours have been? Right now, it's Strange Tales. And I one, absolutely agree with you. Which made me laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh the whole time I was reading it. The, um, this isn't the first time Marvel's done this. So, for those who don't know, Strange Tales is a—it's going to be a three-issue um, little mini-series from Marvel Knights. It's like an anthology where they've gotten uh, a lot of the leading kind of underground and independent uh, creators to do stories of Marvel characters, which you don't typically see. Um, they, last time they did this, uh, I feel like it was like the early 2000s. Well, when when Bendis did. Was it I forget. Team up or something? Did he no, 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 before that, because Mafu did stuff, and I forget the title, Those but they've done this that before. Was that was the Bendis book. That was the Bendis book. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, team up. So, um, so in this one, we've got I forget how many stories there are, but we got an Inhuman story by Paul Pope, 
which if you're all reading Wednesday comics and you see a Strange Adventures, like if you haven't discovered Paul Pope's uh, stuff before, go out and check it out because if this his art is awesome. And you, the Big Inhumans fan, did you like it or? I, I'm gonna be the dissenting voice. I did not like this book, but yeah. it was like okay. I mean, I kind of like I got the feeling like. If I want to read this guy's stuff, any of these guys' stuff, I'd rather read their stuff. Right. And instead of w watching them play novelty games with, with the Marvel characters. Well, yeah, they're send-ups. I mean, none of these stories mean and, anything. And, yeah. and so, like, I think, and this was just my mood when I was reading my books. I wanted something that grabbed me in right. some way. And these were just uh, trivialities, well, jovial you know, uh, diversions. You know what this? You know what I like in this most, too? Is, um, <laughs> this is almost like uh, bands doing cover songs. Yeah. A little, yeah. So Paul, Hope, Paul Pope doing the Inhumans, or or Peter Bagot doing um, doing Hulk, or yeah. Jason doing Spider Man. Like you don't typically get to see them do that. Mm -hmm. And so, like, they, yes, it's a novelty, but you know, I mean, James Kul 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 I can never pronounce Kulchaka. that. Kolchaka. Um, you know, th these are great creators. You know, and if they expose, sure. and if people get exposed to their work by telling a Marvel story, then they go check out their normal stuff. That's good for them too. It, no, it's good. Yeah. I'm not decrying it all, but like, did yeah. I enjoy it? Like, it was all right. It was, yeah. it was fun, I guess. I, I liked looking at the art yeah. more than anything else. Like, that's what it was like for me. I was like, oh, the art's yeah. neat. It's, yeah. it's neat to see these things. But it wasn't like I was, like, yeah. wrapped. But that's, that's my taste. Connor, which ones were your favorites? It's hard. There's so many of them. I really liked the Doctor Strange, the Nightmare one. I, yeah. lo I loved the Punisher story. Um, I loved the, the, the bar fight story and yeah. the Inhumans. I mean, they're all. I loved the one-page Wolverine and Beast story where he finds a blue hair in Jean Grey's bed and kills the beast and it's a teddy bear's hair. Yeah, well, uh, Nicholas Gerwitz, who does the Perry Bible Fellowship, which is an online comic that Dark Horse has collected, did a bunch of one-pagers that are in his style, which are just great. I mean, um, it was really just very funny and, and inventive yeah. and original. I liked the, it. The Doctor Strange vs. Nightmare story by Dash Shaw was my favorite, probably, because yeah, that was, that was the, the one that I was the least expecting and was hysterical. Like, it made me laugh. Like, I, and I love Nightmare, and he never gets used anymore, so... Yeah, um, no, I, I really, I, I, th I thought it was a nice diversion and a nice change of pace and very funny. Yeah, so it was good. So, the, but the next issue of Strange Tales, I believe the next issue, um, has got uh, a Black Widow story by Matt Kint, who did Super Spy, um, which I saw pages from and it looks awesome. So keep an eye out for that. All right, so before we move on, just want to quickly thank one of our sponsors. I um, want to thank uh, Iverse Comics. Uh, if you, everybody's talking about digital comics on the iPhone and iPod and stuff like that, and Iverse is one of the leading folks making those. Um, they just released the new version of their application. You can get it for 99 cents in the iTunes uh, Music Store, and with that, you get 30 free comics. So if you have an iPod or iPhone, there's no reason not to. Um, they also recently launched uh, ArchieDigital.com, which is Archie Comics on your iPhone. And now after the Archie's uh, 600th issue, the Archie's cool Archie's again. Back. Archie's back. Archie's <laughs> back. So uh, <laughs> huge. So um, if you go to Ivers, if you go to IversMedia.com forward slash iFanboy and sign up, we've got a great uh, offer for everybody. Um, if you go to IversMedia.com forward slash iFanboy and buy the application, you get entered in a, a contest to win a free iTunes gift card, so you can buy more comics. Um, but if you don't have an iPhone or an iPod um, and you're on Twitter, as everybody is, um, if you tweet out... Um, anybody who's anybody. If you tweet out by September 16th um, and write at iFanboy and at Iverse Comics and just say, I want to win an iPod Touch or something along those lines, we're going to pick one winner, one winner on September 16th to win an iPod Touch. Um, don't tweet a million times. The first time you do it, you're entered, so we don't want to do like a deluge of that. But So uh, send out a tweet to at iFanboy and at Iverse Comics to win an iPod Touch, and we thank Iverse Comics for supporting us. Awesome. Yeah. Um, moving forward, uh, we have more comics still. Ultimate Comics Spider-Man. They dropped it. Yeah. In the indie shit, it says Ultimate Spider-Man number two. I'm I'm so great. We're back to Ultimate yeah. Spider-Man number two. I'm very happy yes. with that. Um, the new... Uh, the new Era with, with David LaFuente on art. Status quo. Um, you still happy? And John I'm, Suntress, by the way. Yes. I forgot about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, there's a couple of things. So this gets the, it, it, uh, it looks like Principal Suntress has survived uh, the ultimatum event. And now he looks a lot more like his namesake. He really does, oh. yeah. So if you don't listen to Word Balloon, or if you do listen to Word Balloon and you want to see what John Suntress kind of looks like in comic form, you can see him as the principal in this book. But um, before we get into the story, just I, David LaFuente is one of my favorite artists now, and this issue totally nailed it down, because I thought this issue was even stronger than the last one. Mm -hmm. We got a ton of action. I loved how in, uh, the building blew up and Spider-Man like, jumped with the explosion, and for the rest great, of the yeah. book, the back of his costume was all burned. There was um, a couple of interesting action scenes. There was some, there was some speed lines in here I saw on a couple yeah. of them. Um, I love how no matter who's drawing it, his hair is bad. Yeah, no matter what, his He's hair is really bad. He's still got that, that well, like, it's long like, in the front well, bangs. Well, because it's like March 2001, because the it's so you know, only so much time has passed. <laughs> <laughs> He's rocking an old haircut. But um, 
Uh, no, and, and and like you said, the speed lines, and also I love the way he handled his webbing. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it like looks like this explosion. No, the, art, the art is yeah, fantastic. the art was just really really good. Um, I kind of got irked, and I normally I normally don't respond, but somebody uh, mentioned on Twitter they said, "Wow, Ron, you said that you know nothing's changed in the Ultimate Spider-Man universe, and you couldn't be more wrong." And I went, hmm. and I went, and I thought maybe he was reacting to this issue, so I sat down and read this issue, and I was like, "No, nothing's changed. <laughs> like Ultimatum didn't mean anything to this book." And you know, all right, yeah, so. <laughs> Um, but I love the new Mysterio. I think uh, Mysterio is a classic character that I'm glad to see ultimatized, and it looks like Bendis is doing it in a good way. So. I like how these high school students had a whole picnic set up, ready for their to go on. You the didn't roof. bring a picnic to school every day. I, just I didn't. In case. I didn't. Well, once. they're on the roof. They're on the roof. They're like dating. They're young in love. You do things like that. They've got a lot sure of stuff. <laughs> I mean, like, no, he has a he has no, a, come on, wait, it's he has Tupperware. a beaker with a rose in it. It's Tupperware, right? Because he's a science nerd. That makes sense. And they've got Tupperware and w bottled water. It's all right. And a rug. <laughs> he's got, he has to worry about the crime fighting, and he's well. Still, obviously, he's Gwen did this. Gwen did that. Gwen Stacy, she's got a heart of gold. So anyway, but Ultimate Spider-Man's awesome. Just creep me out now. <laughs> Ultimate Spider-Man's great. Um, uh, anybody reading Resurrection from Oni Press? Um, it's uh, one of their ongoings. Um, as, you sir, talk uh, about it. Uh, I just binge read. I've been buying the, the issue three came out this week, and I bought issue one and two, and I sat down and finally read them all. And I, I remember when the Resurrection miniseries came out, and the idea was is Mark Guggenheim, who uh, has been writing Spider-Man, um, and he's been doing some stuff in Marvel. Uh, basically, the premise was an alien invasion and how the Earth deals with it and all stuff like well, that. Well, after they leave, after the well, aliens leave. Well, yeah. now this now this ongoing story is really after the invasion happens. What is life like in the in the world after an alien invasion, kind of similar to The Walking Dead and like what life like after a zombie invasion. It isn't. But, it isn't. Right. Yeah. It's the zombies aren't around anymore. It, it, no, but, no, but that, the aliens this is also really dealing with the politics. Yes. And exactly. how do you reform your leadership? And, and in this, I mean, in issue, uh, this is three, right? Um, yep. They got Carl Rovian type characters taking over the government, taking over the military, and this is this the, the invasion happens when Clinton is president, so he was the president, and yep. and. Um, so the, this Rovian character has the military. There's, there's this one guy in the cover who's the Secretary of Veteran Affairs, and so people think he might be the president. In the line of succession. That's really yeah. about the government. Walking Dead's more about survival, but here yeah. there's nothing to survive except for each other and, the, and it, not having any it, leadership. It almost reminds me of like a little bit of Why the Last Man, mm -hmm. a little bit of Walking Dead in terms of the having to reinvent the world and reinvent yeah. the society. Um, I don't know. It just it, it really captured my imagination, and, and Guggenheim's a great writer. And I like the, the format, how it's one main story and then a flashback story that yeah. fills it out, and I liked this one a lot because at the end, the character burns the Constitution. And for some reason, I had a really visceral reaction to that page. Yeah, it's just big. This is front big page of the Constitution burning. And I, just, I remember reading, it going, "Ugh." It's yeah. so weird to me looking at that. It's a it's an Oni book, but yep. it doesn't look like any other Oni book I've ever seen. It's full color. Yeah, it looks like a comic book. I mean, you know, as as we typically know them. Right. And there's a great and there's a great like kind of examination of you know the idea of that the the bad guy never thinks he's the bad guy. Yeah. And so how do you know who the bad guy is then? And and with all these people vying for power and and vying for you know ruling the country. Um, I don't know Guggenheim's the guy behind the new TV show Flash Forward. You might have seen ads for. So the guy's the guy's pretty good. And this is his own kind of creator on series. And it's one worth worth checking out while it's still early in the issues because I imagine like a year from now we might be talking about. I like it the politics trades. angle. I think if you like yeah. Ex Machina and stuff like that, you might yep. enjoy it. Yeah, totally. So. Um, Another book I wanted to highlight quickly was uh, Brian Wood's Northlanders. Uh, issue 20 came out, and it was the first issue of the arc uh, with the original artist, uh, David Gianfelice. Felice? What? Um, yeah. And, um, Are you Italian? I am. Uh, and it's, uh, this arc is called Sven the Immortal, and it's uh, going back to the, the character from the first arc. If you read Northlanders from when it first uh, started, uh, the character Sven, who returned to his homeland and the big battle that happened from there. This uh, fast forwards in his life to the point where he's married, has kids, and these Vikings have come back to try to kill him, and it's kind of drud uh, drudging up all those previous you know, violence and stuff like that. Um, just it, it, it is interesting to see the original creative team 20 issues later after they started to see now that Brian Wood's way more comfortable writing Vikings, way more comfortable with the form. Matt, to see the original artist, it was just—it was kind of nice for me to kind of reminded me when the book launched. I just finished the second trade last night. Sorry. Yeah, do you like the it? The Ryan Kelly arc. The Ryan Kelly arc was good. It I was really good think. until the very end, I thought. The end, it ended. I felt like it rushed. It ended but, very quickly. Yeah. But other than that, it was enjoyable. Yeah. So I thought, I thought beforehand, the Mighty was was my forerunner. I thought this will be the this will be the Mighty's week. It was very good. It was very good, but it wasn't it wasn't in a spectacular. I like that the Mighty comes out the same week every week as Irredeemable because there's sort of parallel stories of a superhero seemingly gone bad. And at this point, we're just waiting. <laughs> this one's more about atmosphere. Yeah. Because he hasn't really done anything horrible. He's he's killed a couple people, but 
not on the scale of... Well, we don't know about it. Well, but we haven't seen it in the book. Right, but I mean, yeah. he, we're not watching him do horrible things like in Eredemon, but this one's more about the, the encroaching fear. Mm -hmm. Every issue gets tighter and tighter. And you're just waiting by the end yeah. for something bad it's to happen. It's extremely tense. This and is... if this book gets canceled before we find out the truth, I will kill someone. <laughs> is it in any danger to get canceled? I've heard rumors, but I don't want to start other rumors. But right, yeah, that's a good way to do that. Um, do you know? I hope it. I hope it doesn't, because because I'm not. I'm like I'm just getting. Re I, I went back because and got we, the issues. We get a hint that there's something. How good is this book? The art is amazing. The art is great, and the, the art is good. Great. The book is really good. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of book that people should be reading. I mean, this is. I mean, this is one that every every issue I like it more than I did before. Yeah. And like this one, I was like, I think this is one of my favorite series coming out right now. Yep. It really, it's really exciting. It's very tense. It's very moody and gorgeous. Dave Johnson covers on every one of them. Mm -hmm. yep. um, really great covers. Uh, check this book out. If when it, um, get the trade or, or find the the issues are everywhere. Yeah. Like I think the first issues are here. I saw them earlier, so you can find them. It's worth it very much. So absolutely. Yeah, they are. Um, they're not. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll get them back. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, cable number 18, I wanted to kind of quickly highlight because there was that whole, um, the whole crossover that happened with X-Force and Cable and, and, uh, <laughs> the phone's not even on, folks. It's, <laughs> it's <show crap. laughs> Um, but, <laughs> you're reading. Still doesn't make sense. <laughs> Anyway, so Cable came out. Um, Dwayne Straczynski is a great writer. The art changed, and I really did enjoy the artist. The artist um, was a more classic kind of Marvel superhero. Uh, Gabriel Guzman had a more kind of classic comic look to it, um, you know, as opposed to um, some of the artists that were on before it. I think, you know, in that crossover, it was like Clayton Crane and Ariel Olivetti and those kind of folks. Um, the one thing is that for those who read the X-Men know that the main thrust of Cable has been him protecting the little red-headed girl who's the last mutant, the, the most... Not, not Jean Grey? Not Jean Grey, supposedly. But it's been, it's been like over a year, and we still don't know who the girl is. We still don't know. They're still on the run from Bishop. It's a little like, annoying. It's good to read. The comic is good, but it's, the story's got to get on. It's got to move on. Like, that's, yeah. I, I read it, and I was just like, it was enjoyable, but I'm tired. I mean, that started when I was reading Uncanny way yeah. back. Like, over a year ago. Yeah, no, more than that. Yeah, so. That's yeah. annoying. So yeah, so it's it looked good. He's got a big gun. He's got a big gun. Big yeah. gun right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, nice. all right, our last book that we want to talk about. Last book is uh, Immortal Weapons number two. Two. Yeah. Um, this is actually, if you've never read any of the Iron Fist or or um, Immortal Weapons or anything, it was almost a standalone story about one of the Immortal Weapons, which are the warriors from the Iron Fist tournament the that fat you guy. remember. Yeah, the Fat yeah. Cobra and the Bride of Nine Spiders or whatever. This is uh, basically it's two stories in here, and the main who's, story who's was written by Cullen Bunn. Cullen Bunn is the guy who Ooh, wrote I like him. who wrote The Damned, yeah, um, which is a, a nice little graphic novel. Uh, there's a couple. The three issue series that had come out from Oni, um, a book I really, really liked a lot. And this is his first Marvel work. Um, and it's being drawn by Dan Brereton, who's sort of a classic horror uh, artist. And it was a good little little short story about these, it was almost like a BPRD story, like relic hunters that had gone to, to find a relic that had to do with the Bride and the Nine Spiders and, and the little thing that happens in the little haunted house they get. And so if you were looking for that kind of story from Marvel Comics, it was a, a book that you know, a lot of people probably would miss, and I thought I'd point it out. Uh, the Damned is, is a really great graphic novel, um, and, and this is a guy who's a, who's a good writer, and you will hear more from him. Cool. Excellent. So those are the comics that we enjoyed this week, and if you go to ifanboy.com forward slash comics, you can see all the books that came out this week, and you can sign up for an account and do your pull list and rate and write your own reviews um, and share with the public what you think. And uh, we wanted to highlight a couple of reviews of books that we're not reading. Um, so, Connor, why don't you do the first one? Owly fan reviewed Invincible Iron Man 17, gave the story a 5 out of 5, and the art a 5 out of 5. That's two lines. Yeah. Come on. That's, <laughs> you can't work with that. I don't know what that meant. User, <laughs> I, the users picked this book 4.9%. And Owly fan said, I <laughs> roll with it. I'm, I am. I admit the first arc of the series wasn't the greatest, but once the Dark Reigns tie-in kicked in, this book has gotten consistently better with each issue. It's almost like getting four stories in one issue as you have a Tony Stark story, one for Pepper, one for Maria Hill and Black Widow and Norman Osborn. I also appreciate Fraction's writing showing Tony's mind is deteriorating, be it his misspelled email to Maria Hill or to his listening to an introduction to electrical engineering audiobook while flying in his suit. I stopped reading Invincible Iron Man at like issue three, mm -hmm. and I've just heard people talk about how great it is since I've dropped it. So I don't know if those two are related. I picked or... up one or two here and there. Yep. Um, it's okay. Yeah. It was good. You don't like, you don't apparently, like writing. Not so much. Yeah, but apparently the the what he's done with with Tony Stark coming out of Civil War and coming out of Secret Invasion 
not Secret Civil War, Secret Invasion, has been really um, it, it clever. Did, it did win an Eisner. It did. So True. maybe we might be wrong. I, <laughs> what? <laughs> Pshaw. But uh, so if you like it, uh, you can not feel alone. Uh, Stuklock. Uh, wrote in uh, with a review of it's which. Just, it's so hard to be Bob. Like, put your real name. I know. <laughs> Tommy. Honestly. Maybe that is his real name, and he's crying. I now. feel horrible. Then. You're an asshole. Uh, he wrote a review of Witchfinder in the Service of Angels, number three of five from Dark Horse Comics. I see Paul over there is excited. Uh, this is a, a Mignola penned uh, story. Um, give the story a five out of five, and the art a five out of five. And he says, oh, the user pick of the week percentage is 1.2%. Uh, the book moves. The book moves in a Sherlock Holmesian bit of clue collection and mystery solving and ends with some interesting clues as to how the mythical land of Hyperborea fits into the Hellboy mythology. Mr. Stenbeck's artwork perfectly fits the subject matter and, of course, the Hellboy aesthetic. His use of deep blacks and bright reds, the primary, well, Dave Stewart, uh, and bright reds, the primary colors of the Hellboy world, really contributes to the mysterious and creepy vibe of this book. I decided to wait and read this as one thing later. Wow. Um, but I have no doubt that it's good. It's Mike Mignola. Why did you decide to do that? Uh, I don't know, like those stories can feel a little bit decompressed and I thought, like, I was really enjoying the Wild Hunt stories, but like they took a big thing in the middle right. and I just figure if it's going to be clue collecting and a mystery thing, I am totally going to lose track of that on a month to month basis. So. As evidenced by Irredeemable, where does that Yeah, take? I never get away with anything, do no. I? No. <laughs> what do we do but bust each other's balls? That's I know, I know. <laughs> oh, two slash marks. I, I'm out. <laughs> so, if you go to iFanboy.com. Is for everyone? <laughs> Go to ifanboy.com slash comics, check out all the comics that came out, leave your reviews there. Um, so that wraps up our portion of the show about this week's comics. Um, and now we want to move to some questions from you, the audience. But before we do, we just want to thank our remaining sponsors. We want to thank Squarespace. And if you need to build a website, Squarespace is the way to do it. They host it. They've got all these great tools. Go to squarespace.com where you can check it out. Josh's blog is hosted by them. And, I have a and done by. site. It's very easy to use. Uh, go to Squarespace and use the promo code iFanboy. Uh, you get, um, you get a two-week two free, week, two free trial. And then you get a discount by using the coupon code iFanboy. So definitely check that out. We want to thank Squarespace as well. They're mm -hmm. awesome. Next week on iFanboy. You May lost me. Mayhem? Mayhem? Uh. Mayhem? Mayhem? <laughs> <laughs>